G'day, welcome back to the 40 channel. So today we're just doing a bit of uh, 40 part shopping. So we're out on the farm. This is where we've got all our bits and pieces. There's Jack's cab actually. So we'll go and have a quick look how Jack's car's going. This one here is a full on donor vehicle. So we've already used bits and pieces off this for Jack's car. We've cut the whole back of the chassis off this one. Sounds a bit extreme, but this chassis was pretty much gone. And on top of that, all the mounts, everything had been cut off with the gearbox and the engine. It had a V8 in it, apparently, at some stage. All these uh, panels had all been welded together. We've started to cut them apart. We're just going to try and save everything off this we can. And uh, use them either for Jack's car, uh, the fire truck, and uh, for anyone else that needs to save parts. We've got parts going to other people to help their builds as well. As well as that, we're going to be looking at other bits and pieces down here. There's an old 47 cab down there. The floor out of that will save the LX, which is pretty cool. But uh, at the moment, let's just keep our part shopping going, strip some bits, and then we'll go check out where you're up to, Jack. Let's do it. Right on. Back of the right now you might recognize this one this is the fire truck cab for the 1965 so this is samantha's body as andy named her so we're going to rip the seats out of this so we can take the seats home so we can start stripping all of them down that way we can send the seats off to the upholsterer and i don't care he can have them for months to uh do what he needs to do when he gets time to do it and um Hopefully by the time he's got the seats ready, they'll be ready to go in. And if they come early, then that's good too. Anyway, let's get the seats out. That is what I love. Huh. The original key with the TEQ logo on it. All right. How old is that? There we go. We need the passenger seat out of this one. Oh, crikey, that hinge is stiff. Well, we know what to do. Bit of R1. See if we can free up the hinge. See, it really does work. There's a fuel pump jack, a <laughs> fuel pump. Headlining. Jeez. VB. Far out, that's old. <laughs> Get the seat out, Jack. Alright, make it easy. Alright? Yep. Don't even need me. Too good. Jack goes to the gym every day. Spends more time at the gym than he does on his Land Cruiser. Safety glass. Mate. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully we'll give these some brand new life. Alright Jack, this is looking pretty good to when I last came out. Yep. You're pretty happy you've actually got a rolling chassis now? Pretty much rolling. Brakes aren't really... Brakes are locked in, so yep. they're not technically rolling. So we, need, <laughs> so we need to rebuild the brakes. Uh, Do the hubs. Front hubs. Um, and then should be ready to chuck the engine in, clean up the engine. Or hopefully we can start putting everything back together yeah mate you've done a very good job without me so yeah. new shackles new shocks mm -hmm. 
the chassis has been totally cleaned up. There's been a little bit of repair work to the chassis, so that's all taken care of. Looking good, mate. Yeah, pretty Very happy with exciting. it. Very exciting. All right. All right, well, let's take some bits and pieces home. We'll get them sorted on yours and- Let's do it. Good job, Jack. Righto, the seats are back in the shed, so it's time to strip them down. Now, these seats have been sitting in both the vehicles for such a long time. They've been very well used, let's put it that way. Um, the seats are both exactly the same, except uh, a few years apart. So, 1965, and this one we're trying to work out, but we think it's about 1969. So. But it doesn't really matter, the frames are exactly the same, but what was different was the trimming. Now, you can actually see the original trimming on this one. Underneath, they've trimmed over the top, and it was sort of like a, um, I don't know, a bit like a light caramel sort of a colour. Uh, Andy Budge, he did a beautiful restoration on his seats, and he actually went back and found the original colour and did something very similar. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, whether we're going to go with that original colour or we're just going to go with a, a classic black or a grey or even go with this cream, I'm not sure yet. Being the fire truck, it's going to be red, patinaed, so we'll see how we go. Um, this one, well that was black, I believe that was just the original colouring, nothing very spectacular about that. But what was different about uh, the earlier model frames is that all the frames were the same silver from what I can see as like all your trimming on your dash. So that would be pretty cool. We're going to make that all come back to life. The later models were just a simple black or grey. Right, let's strip them all apart. It's going to be a bit yuck because it looks like we've got a bit of a rat's nest in that one or something has lived in there. Um, clean up all the frames, get them all freshly painted and cleaned up. We'll send them over to the upholsterer and let them do their magic. Anyway, let's get into it. So we'll just start with the driver's seat. This is the original 1965 fire truck seat. Let's see if we can get them saved and get them back to life. All right, let's get into the driver's seat. Now, they're in fairly good condition for 1965. There's no rust in them, or very light rust anyway. Hopefully with a uh, bit of R1, we'll clean it all up, get all the rail mechanisms working. Give every bolt a soak with R1. So we'll bag everything up. What I loved about even the ute seats, nice hard solid back with this nice piping around it. So even the rear of the seat, what you didn't see in the utes, was actually quite presentable right back in 65. So very similar to what you'd find in the short wheelbase uh, or the troopies back in the day. Right eh? Now, we had a brace plate going across here. It looks like for some reason someone's cut it off. I don't know why, but we'll have to make sure we put that little brace plate back in. That's an easy fix. Again, all the bottom of the seat is in actually really good condition. It's not very rusted at all. So you can see tiny bits of surface rust, but overall incredible condition. We'll just give everything a bit of a lube up. You can see that's why we need that rail just to support that frame. Got our, our rails. That was a little bit of movement, but we can't get too much. We'll just give it a good soak. All right, there's one rail. Not sure if that's genuine or not, but that's interesting. Yeah. 
This side here has the same elastic. And the rest of it is just Phillips head screws all the way around so we can take this trim off here. Nice bit of trimming. Nice little molding, like everything with the older ones. It's got like these nice little ridges in it, similar to what's on the dash. It's this little detail that just really set these ones apart. They could have made it just a, a flat squared piece with no decorative to it at all, but they actually went to a little bit of effort and it actually looks really nice, so. Here. I'm actually glad to see that it actually has some of the original uh, seat trimming on it because it means that we can try to match this stitching and uh, make it look very similar to what it should be. All right, let's pull that off. It's uh, starting to look pretty scary under there now. give all that a bit of a clean out. But I think if any need replacing it'll be these four rear springs. Right, so the spring that went here, now it's it's damaged, it's, well it's actually broken in half, so we need to find a new one of them. Some of these support springs that come across here, some of them are really stretched out and they've lost their spring. These ones here are broken. Uh, now you can see these little clips that hold the springs to this support bar going all the way around. All this side here is okay. This side here, they're all gone and broken off. Which makes me think why this spring broke because there was so much pressure on it. This spring was broken, this support was broken, this support was broken, and there was nothing supporting this rear spring here. So we need to make up some new little support clips. New spring, We'll see if we can get some new uh, new small springs. Now to get that spring out very easy, you flip it over and you've just got these tabs here. So all we do is just bent that tab straight back with a screwdriver and that spring pops straight out. When the new spring goes in, we'll just fold those, those tabs back over again. Right, so we've got a little bit of fabrication we're going to have to do. We're going to have to make up some little clips, little brackets, some support rails all that stuff to bring this seat back up to where it should be. So we're gonna make up a new support rail. We'll sandblast the whole lot, clean it all up, and we'll repaint it all, or this light gray, we'll paint the whole lot in it. Same with the, uh, the seat here, this support rail here is missing. Now that was actually the same thing that was missing on the uh, FJ40, if you go way back, we had to make one of them as well. So there's a bit of work to do before we can actually take any of this to the upholsterers. I thought we'd be able to rip them out and just send it straight off the upholsterers, but I don't want to do that until I can give him all the framework so he has everything to work with. That's even better to our colour that we actually need. Look at that. At least the springs in this one look in good condition. Okay, so the rear seat frame is in actually really good condition. All the springs are in great condition. There's nothing broken. None of the clips are broken. I think that will clean up. <laughs> Get all that rat nest out of it. That'll clean up really nicely. That can all go to the upholsterer. Now I would have hated for the upholsterer to do all this. It's disgusting. I'm sure they do or have seen a lot worse.
Right, so all the seat frames are totally stripped down. I've repaired what I could with the springs, passenger seat, driver's seat, frames, backing panels over there, which are out of sight. All been sandblasted and all been cleaned up with some wax and grease remover. So make sure you give it a really good clean with wax and grease remover, get rid of everything first. And now you've seen me use this stuff before, the ZPH. Now this stuff is awesome. And the reason it's awesome is that it is a really solid, heavy duty protection and primer against any type of rust. If there's any really light sort of rust left, this will just go straight over it and seal it up and stop it. So it's pretty good stuff. They're all rust protected and primed all in one go, so that's fantastic. All right, I will let it sit and dry, and we will uh, tomorrow we'll come and put a top coat on and uh, give it that uh, that nice classic look. Just lift that spring off. Now yeah, that's all free. Okay, now these two sides are ready to be cleaned up. Put all them back into the passenger seat bag and we'll clean them up later. We found these which would look like being sitting there for a long time. They're covered in dust right on the back shelf. And hopefully in the packet. Look at that. So the only thing we'll have to do is make a hook on both ends. They'll work perfectly. Righto, colour matching. Now it is always a very difficult thing to do when you don't know the colour code and there's been multiple colours over it and there's rust and all that type of stuff on it. So what we did, I went down to the, uh, the local paint shop, the auto paint shop, super helpful guys. We took down a few different components. So we took down the, uh, the trimming that goes right on the edge of the seat, just for, you know, that a decorative trimming. We looked at some of the brackets. These seat rails are all nicely freed up, so they're all running. Plus, we have a bit of color just in here as well that you can, uh, you can sort of see. So between all them, what we actually found out was that I actually thought it was going to be the ash gray, which is what your uh, speedometer and everything else on your dash is, because the color match was so close, it was too uncanny not to be ash gray. But when you started to compare it against your seat rails and your seat frame, and with the help of uh, the auto shop guy, we actually found that these have been repainted. These components here have been repainted when they did some re-trimming and they painted these in ash gray. So you could actually scratch the paint back and you could see it was more of a, a bluey gray sort of a color underneath. Went with a color called blue gray straight off the color chart. And look, it's not exactly the same. Once you pick a color, whether it's right or wrong, you've got to commit to it and be happy with it. And that's what we're gonna paint all our frames in. Just gonna hit the areas we really need to see in the, in the blue gray, because that's the crucial bits. Righto, well that's it. The seats have been totally stripped down, totally cleaned up, sandblasted, primed, rubbed back, and now the top coat. So I'm actually really happy with this gray. 
It's very similar to the grey that was on there before and it's actually very similar to the uh, undercase. So it was a little bit tricky to make sure that we got a full cover. The difference being this is a gloss and the other was a matte so you can really see the shine coming out on it. Well, that's it. We probably won't see anything else happen with these seats until I get them back. Who knows, it could be six months, but that's okay. It gives us all the time in the world to get focused back on the rest of the fire truck. We've got to get that engine fired up and then we can start on the body. Righto, so that's it guys. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. Hey, feel free to subscribe, leave a comment. There might be stuff that you've seen that might be done a little bit differently and leave a thumbs up. Anyway guys, until next time, take care of yourselves. and leave a thumbs up. Anyway guys, until next time, take care of yourselves.